Hi everybody, in this quick little video I want to demonstrate briefly how I went about photographing a collection of motorcycles for a personal project of mine that I started last year in 2019. Um, it's an interesting technique that involves combining both ambient light, so the light around us coming from the sky, the sun, that kind of stuff, and combining it with the use of multiple flash techniques and specifically using a very large light source and which enables you to paint in in Photoshop to paint in the highlights and get all the details in the materials the metals the chrome the fabrics if there is the leather that kind of stuff it's a fantastic technique for getting all kinds of details especially if you're only using a, a 35 millimeter DSLR really comes in handy. So this is a quick little technique I'm just going to show you basically how I shot it and in another follow-up video I'll show you how I put it all together. So the first step is to find a nice location. And in this case it was on a farm property and there was a really cool old barn and this is early in the morning so the barn that I'm facing and where I put the motorcycle was completely in shadow very important it has to be in shadow or some kind of nice shaded area so it's not being blasted by the Sun so the bikes in shadow and what I'm going to do is I'm going to bracket my exposures using the ISO so changing the ISO on your camera from one number to the next making it one stop more sensitive in each subsequent picture so the first picture was shot at 100 ISO. The next one was shot at 200 and the last one was shot at ISO 400. So this one here, this image that we're looking at right here, this is the ambient light hitting the uh, hitting the scene and like I said it's in shadow and what we're actually looking at is a combination of three exposures, the 100, 200, and 400. And I'll show you how we got that later on in the next video. So this is a um, what they call it a high definition image. And after that, I brought in my really big softbox, held held on a stand, and the owner of the bike was actually holding on to it, even though it was weighted. It was kind of windy, so I didn't want it to fall over just in case. This is a classic. Uh, 1977 Benelli Sei SEI 750 and he restored this bike it's very rare not many in the country I think there's about 10 in the entire country of Canada and he's got one it's in show condition and he does ride it and it's an amazing bike so this is the ambient exposure image and next I did the front of the bike as you can see this is the big softbox here and there are three flashes within this softbox and it's on a stand over to the left that is weighted. So I did three exposures and then blended those three exposures together, giving me the highlights where I want them. You can see them on the front of the bike and see some on the chrome, uh, some on the tire, and later I'm going to use the highlights and paint them in where I want them. And after that, I went and did the rear end of the bike this was the third motorcycle in my series and I learned something when doing this I found out that it's very important to get the the light as close as I can because it's not as big as the entire bike therefore I need to get it closer so it appears larger that's why it's one of the reasons I'm using a really big softbox this is 50 inches from side to side and I believe the flashes were at half power approximately so it was adequate to give me the, the highlights that I wanted and some of the shape but when I go out and do it again this year and I already have I think three other bikes booked for this year when I go out and do it this year I'm going to strive to get the um, the softbox the light surface as close to the bike as I can so I can bring it I don't know if you can see my cursor here let's see if I can find something where you can see what I'm doing 
I could probably bring it to here without any problem as long as it's not obscuring the motorcycle itself and then I could put it there and it will stretch the highlights further along the surfaces and that's very important because this is not as big as it should be I should have a softbox as big as the bike but I don't have that so this is what I have to use and so the idea is to start with your ambient because you're not going to have any stands or anything in the way which is very important later on I'll explain that later on in the next video and then you do the front and then you do the rear if there was a softbox not a softbox if there was a sidecar in here or if it was a really big bike I might move the light to a middle position as well that will give me one exposure here one exposure here and then one exposure here so that'd be three, six, nine images, plus the ambient, that'd be 12 Im images. So it's a whole bunch of files that have to be um, pieced together and then used to produce that. So this is my finished image. It's exactly what I was looking for, something that has a punchy color, something that's dramatic, shows the bike in fantastic light, and it's it's really what I was hoping to do when I started this project. This is the third bike I did, and I did two more at the same location the same morning. Um, a couple of Honda bikes, classics also. Um, and he's got a nice collection, and he really likes to work on these bikes, which is awesome. Um, so that is how I went and shot this, and I believe anybody could do this as long as they are patient and pay attention to all the details. So that is how I shot this bike and I made a fantastic 20 by 30 print and gave him a print of this and the other two bikes that I photographed and he was really really pleased which is fantastic and uh, I'm hoping that everybody's gonna come back to my YouTube channel in a week or so and see the follow-up video to see exactly how I put these images together in Photoshop because I think you can do this too. It wasn't that hard for me to do. It took me, um, I think, three tries to really figure it out. And now that I've done a bunch of these bikes, I know how to improve my process for next year. I should say this year, 2020. And everything's gonna be even smoother and a lot more, uh, a lot more um, streamlined and enjoyable. So there you go, I hope you give it a try, and thanks for watching. This is Mike Taylor at Mike Taylor Photo Arts in Peterborough, Ontario. Have a great day.